I'm Kevin Devine and this is Devine Encounters. Now Mark Baxter is not a name you might be too familiar with, but he's a PR to the stars, he's a mover and shaker behind the scenes, and one of his books has just been turned into a motion picture starring Bob Hoskins and Jenny Agatha. Now Mark, how are you today? How are you Kevin Devine for Devine Encounters. How are you doing, Mike? Now normally you're behind the cameras, you're a mover and shaker, but we've managed to persuade you out in front of the camera today because one of your books has just been adapted into That's a right. major motion picture. That's right. So tell us about it, how did it come about? The book's called The Mumpa. Um, I self-published it in 2007, couldn't get a publishing deal. It's basically written about seven guys in a pub in South London who um, like a drink, shall we say, like a song. And I was amongst that crowd from the age of sort of 13, 14. Uh, with my dad, my dad was one of the crowd, and then I just loved the, the company, funny people, good characters, and I just, I mean, my dad said he died in 2000, so I sort of removed myself from that area a little bit, because it's basically too many memories, but really missed it, really missed the camaraderie and the laughs and the jokes. Started writing down the stories, and it sort of developed into a book. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it was sort of, didn't start out in that way, but it, it sort of got a life of its own, really. And the characters got a life of their own, really. And, um, yeah, just managed to get a, a 75,000, 80,000 words into a novel, which is a lot of writing for me. I mean, that's not my world at all, but I just kept going and kept going. It took a couple of years. And then I, I sort of, I knew Paolo, you hit the writer, Paolo, you hit really well. He's a mate of mine. And uh, Paolo shaped into a book and, you know, worked out the plot points and the narrative, etc. So we had a nice little project on our hands, but we just couldn't get a publisher. So um, I self-published. And then um, trying to keep it alive was the old bit, because it was out there and there no publicity behind it, no budget behind it, no money behind it. So the only way to keep it alive was keep selling it. So me being me, all I did for the rest, for another two years, a flog, 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 blag, 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 which I'm quite good at, actually. Uh -huh. So everyone I knew, I used everybody I knew, I just, you know, get hold of the book, spread the word, use on the social networking sites, the Facebooks and the Twitters, trying to sell the book basically, just can't keep it alive. And then um, I met a guy called Trix Worrell, who wrote Desmond's, the barbershop TV series. I know back the in the 80s. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Trix, uh, I obviously knew the industry really well. I said to Trix one day, am I wasting my time with this book? Be honest with me. And he said, not at all. It's got some really good stories in here, good characters. There's someone I know that would like that as a potential TV series. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm there, I'm, I'm there with no money. Why not give it a go? And the guy, a book, a guy was called Tony Humphreys. I worked for a TV company called uh, Talent Television. And Tony just loved it. He identified with the characters, he identified with the story. He was from that area as well. I mean, it's all based in South London. And Tony was from sort of Elephant and Castle Way and he's, he's fa had family in the area. He knew the people straight away. He then optioned the book for a couple of years to work on trying to get it developed into something. Start off with a TV series, six part TV series. We loved that idea. A bit like Falls and Horses, an early minder. And then, uh, I'm not quite sure how, but he managed to get a good budget together mm -hmm. and it became a film. It be developed for a film. And again, we're still thinking, I'm thinking quite a small budget. And at the same time, I'm still trying to sell the books. I'm just, mm. there's, no, there's no other way, only I've got to keep it alive. So all these things are going on in the background, you're thinking it's never going to happen, you know, no one really believed it. And then one day he got caught at a meeting, he said, I've got Bob Hoskins for the film, which is quite a shock, because everyone loves Bob Hoskins, he's, you know, obviously iconic. Absolutely. So once he got on board, it all became very serious, because everyone took it serious, because they're thinking, well, Bob Hoskins is involved, it can't be that bad. <laughs> So we got Bob involved, involved and then um, he just got sued. Then we got started getting people like Jenny Agatha, Phil Davis, the actor who oh, I actually love. Dudley Sutton, an old character actor from the sort of 50s and 60s and not always popping up in the Sweeney's and the 70s. Uh, he got involved and um, quite a few younger uh, actors coming through. Adam Deacon, who just won up after. A guy called Callum McNabb, who actually plays me in the, in the film, which is quite surreal. Nice kid, Adam. Uh, sorry, nice kid. Both pair of nice kids. And um, Emily attacks. She's in it like she's been in, in between us. So nice, uh, nice little crowd, old and new. You've mentioned some some of the biggest names in British cinema. Yeah, here, right. Yeah. And you mentioned one of the young up and coming actors yeah. is playing you. Yeah. So how does it feel that all these are personal? characters and references and stories you've worked on over the years is now going to be up there on the big silver screen. Yeah, it's, it's very, very surreal. I mean, I, I've seen the film. I went to a screen, the early screening of the film, and it was an hour and a half, and it, I sat and it lasted about five minutes in my head. It was just so much to take in because they're saying my name on the screen, and Bob Oscars is using my name, and, and, I, and I, my dad's portrayed on there, and my dad died in 2000, I said. So 
it's really, really a lot of taking. I took my mum to the one of the first ones, and she really, not got upset, but it was quite a lot of taking for all of us, really, because obviously it's a personal story to us. But actually, when you look back, it, I wrote the book as a tribute to me dad and, and, and another guy called Gudger, who was, who was his best mate. That was really, it was all I was doing with the book in the first place. And if nothing else, that would, at least I had done that. I thought if I sell 10 copies, it's a tribute to these people. Obviously, it's got a bit more than that. So it's quite weird seeing all these people being portrayed by well-known actors and I mean Jenny Haggard plays my mum which is quite bizarre <laughs> it's quite bizarre it's really bizarre mind you back now <laughs> it's really strange you know because obviously you know her work for years and years yeah. and years and then she's my mum in a film it's really bizarre and did you get the chance to like sort of introduce your mum to Jenny Agatha and what was it well, like got, on the set amazing yeah. enough they actually met before the film started at a bus stop in Camberwell they both, both live in Camberwell <laughs> and my mum said you're playing me in a film <laughs> and she was like okay love thank you like didn't well you really? know, if someone says that in the street you ain't gonna believe them are you but that actually happened you know it was a it's such a weird story the whole thing yeah it, and they, yeah and I, and I went down I, my mum come down my, my wife come down and uh, yeah it's, it's quite weird meeting bob i mean obviously i love bob i mean things like the long good friday one of my favorite films of all time sure so to see him actually speak in the lines that we have written in the book and and in the you know been adapted for the film was, was truly surreal it's, even now it's, it's, it's really hard to take it in. It's only a couple of weeks away before it comes to the screen. So you're sort of wondering what's going to happen, really. What date's it going to be out? It's out on April the 27th, Friday, not, yeah, Friday. Nation, hopefully nation, nationwide. And it's not going to be the name of the book. It's actually got a different title for yeah. the film. Yeah, the book's called The Mum Pub, but the film's called Outside Bet. Which is there. <laughs> Unbelievably, I've got one on today. Can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> a wee bit of promotion. Quite rightly, too. And talking about the promotion, because I've mentioned that you're normally behind the cameras yeah. or yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. So who are the people you've worked with over the years? Um, well, mainly I've a lot of clothing companies. I mean, I've, I've always been interested in fashion as well. It's mm. always been a biding interest of mine. So uh, when the book sort of took off, I, I, I took the opportunity, really, to come out of the 9-to-5 corporate world, you know, every day working. I've always had a load of contacts and a load of personal friends, really. So I started working with them and getting them clothing deals, and you know I know quite a few people at clothing companies, the likes of Fred Perry and Delicious Junction and Nicholson and Walcott and Peckham Roy, local small firms, but they they're always looking for a bit of you know promotion. Mm. And I would take I take people in there, well-known people like the likes of Weller and Mr. Free, Martin Freeman and Paolo and Gary Crowley and various other people into um, these places and. The companies get sung out of it, the, mm. the person gets sung out of it, and you know, it's all publicity, that's what goes on all day. But I try and keep it really, really subtle, not, don't really overblow it too much. Um, and they do me a favour and I'll do them a favour. So it's all, it's all, you know, mates really. Movers and shakers. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and you mentioned Martin Freeman there. Yeah. Now, Martin's actually, as well as being obviously one of the best known actors coming yeah. out just now, and he's going to be in The Hobbit, he's yeah, going to yeah. play Bilbo Baggins. Yeah, yeah. But he was also known for his fashion. Yeah. And on the mod scene as a yeah. DJ before he yeah. really became an actor. Yeah. And is this where these sort of contacts come in so that you can point them in the direction? Yeah, I mean, Martin's always, I mean, you know, he's always loved that scene, the music and the clothes of that scene, the mod, the mod scene, 60s scene. He's, he's, it's a genuine interest. He's not just a, you know, a flight of fancy. He actually loves all that. So music, I mean, he's got a fantastic real collection. He loves loves DJing, loves the sort of club culture and clothes. And uh, yeah, we, we, we'd all sort of meet up and, and have, when you start talking to someone from that world, the, you know, you, you know in a couple of seconds whether it's, they're actually faking it or they're real because they either lived it or they haven't. Yeah. So you know pretty much straight away if they're part of that world. And, and the majority of people I actually know are from that sort of scene really. You know, we've all been in the clubs and we've all been buying the same records and wearing the same clothes over the years or our own take on the whole thing. So, you know, you've got a lot of common interests and um, a lot of references together, which which makes life easier when you when you're sort of trying to when you're trying to get a know and try and work with them and you know not drive them too mad because that's that's quite easy to do and they get driven mad as it is anyway. Uh, it's nice to sort of you know they know you're from that same sort of world. They they treat you a little bit differently, I think, and they they know that you're in it for the right reasons, not necessarily just to exploit their name and their, their image and stuff, you know. So we can look forward to outside bet coming out mm. in April. Yeah. Is there going to be a premiere? Are you going along? Yes, there is. Yes. Well, hopefully, yeah. I mean, hopefully I get a ticket. I should. I, should hope. <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah. There's one. I'm not quite sure the date yet. We're still. They're still debating now. I mean, it's just to do with Leicester Square being like a building site at the minute. Obviously, sure. it's very difficult to get dates and stuff off Westminster Council. But yeah, there is. There is there's talk of a premiere. Oh. Universal Pictures have picked it up, so the distribution should be pretty decent. Fantastic. So hopefully, yeah, it does open up. It does open up. And how are you going to feel on the night? Do you think when everyone else is there? You've had a wee sneak preview. Yeah. But when everyone else is there for the actual the 
launch now, yeah. and you're sitting there seeing yourself again. Bob Hoskins is yeah. going to be there. Jenny Agatha's yeah. your mum. <laughs> so how are you going to feel? Uh, I really don't know, to be honest. But I mean, I, I mean I've, I've, I've having seen the film, I'm very proud of what they've done with it. I mean, I'm, they've, they've pretty, been pretty true to the book, which is important to me. I was quite, you know, obviously protective of the book. They've been pretty true, true to the characters, and uh, they've, they've captured that sort of old the ethos of it all quite well. It's, it looks like they had a lot of fun when they made the film. It looks like that, and that's what it was about, really. It, you know, the, the, day, the days in the pub were just fun. It was good laughs. I mean, they would, you know, they would take the mickey out of saying terrible, but it was all done with a little sort of wink and a, you know, little nod, and it was all done for the right reasons. And, uh, you know, there's some surprises with the film. we got Paul Weller has given us a, a track for the, which is now the theme song for the film, which is amazing, because obviously that's something that Paul hasn't really done before. Um, did it as a favour to me, really, which is lovely for me. So that's that's going to be a surprise for a few people, because I've not, not, sort of kept that quiet, really, because obviously doing the business angle of that was quite hard to do, but that's a lovely little track, and I think that could do really well as it released, if he releases it. I'm not sure he's got any plans for it. So little things like that, you know, like, you know Oskins and Weller and the, the various people like involved with these things, you know, it, it could be really a nice little package, I think. I think it could do well. Fingers crossed it will do. Thank Mark, you. mover and shaker, thank you very much. We wish thank you all you, the sir. best. Thank you very much. With what's a very personal project. Thank for you. you. Lovely. Cheers, mate. No problem.